apparel design. Maybe in specific like streetwear, like graphic tee ideas. However, I'm gonna spend some time today and just gear you guys some really cool fun effects and techniques that can give texture and love to your next apparel project. Given I'm like now in charge of apparel at my company, I, I really, I'm not fully tapped in. So I wanted to of course educate myself at the same time you guys. So let's just, let's just hop into it. Just before we start, by the way, don't forget to check out the first link in the description down below to check out my everything pack, 26 custom made products made just for you guys as designers and artists. The cool part is of course, we have an awesome discord community guys and also just check out vibe with learn from and, and just like get some critiques, all that good stuff. But it is just a single purchase. And for the rest of your entire life, you will get any product that I release free, no matter what the price is, email directly to you guys. Join the other 7,100 and something, something plus people. And I hope you enjoy it. So first thing is first is creating these half tone photographics you see on Pinterest everywhere on these t-shirts. Of course, to start this thing off, you're gonna need a photo, probably something that has a little bit of energy to it or like that's iconic or bold or just cool, etc. Then you wanna go ahead and press W on your keyboard to bring up the quick selection tool in order to actually use the option up top called select subject. Once you press select subject, it'll probably select the most in focus object in the frame. Usually it's like the person or whatever is in focus. So if you end up finding yourself, you have to fix the selection sometimes, you can press Q on your keyboard. So then now you're in quick selection mask mode and what you can just go ahead and do is you kind of zoom in, you take a nice brush over here, white is gonna delete. So if I ever have to fix something that's like, like not perfectly aligned, white will delete. And then let's just say for some reason you wanna get rid of it going down this way, then black will erase. So black being filled in red is erasing, white, whatever's being shown without the red will be basically staying there. The selection in his hair is a little bit red, so that means it's gonna, go, it's gonna be deleted. We don't want that, right? White, boom, delete, and do the same thing over here and over here, and then kind of just go all the way around so that's all absolutely perfect, then yeah, let's just, just make it a little better. After that, you can press Q one more time to exit out of quick mask mode and just press the layer mask button down here to cut it out. And also right click convert to a smart object to adjust settings even when you're actually done with the overall effect. You can go back at any time. Now select your photo and go to filter pixelate color halftone. Max radius, I personally set that to six. Then I use 100, 150, 150 for my remaining settings. Now head over to adjustments and choose threshold. And of course, adjust it left and right until you find something that you like. You should be looking for like a balance of like light and shadows so that way it doesn't feel like one's too overpowering over the other. After all that, you're gonna wanna select both your layers, your adjustment layer and your photo layer. You could do so by actually holding control on your keyboard after selecting your first layer. Then press control J to duplicate those layers and then convert it into a smart object to merge the layers together. Then you can just hide your other layers for now because you're, you'll probably never use them again, but just in case, you know. Now with the merge layer finally selected, you wanna go to select, color range, and this is where we're actually gonna adjust what the design will look like on the t-shirt. If the design is gonna go on a light colored t-shirt, choose the drop down highlights, and if it's going on a dark t-shirt, choose shadows and adjust the bottom image so you have a balance again of both the highlights and shadows. Don't, don't overthink this too much, just, just give it a shot. Press okay, and then once you've done that, you can activate and select the layer mask once again, and once you probably do, you'll probably see your image disappears. And it's okay, just press Control i on the layer mask to invert the selection, and it'll pop back up. And just for the record, the reason why you ended up doing that is because this actual image no longer now has the white under the tone, right? So now, if you kind of put a color underneath, let's just say it's your the color of a t-shirt, something like this probably more, uh, like so, right? Now, it'll no longer have the white, so you're not getting like a black and white threshold look. You're getting a nice look overall, so if you didn't have that, if I were to go back for a second, without the threshold or without the color range, you would click on this, you have a black and white. So if you want, it depends on the style, but usually you're probably not gonna want it there, so that's why you wanna do that to actually get rid of it. Simple enough, right? Next is something super easy for those who need to use 3D text to just have Adobe Illustrator on hand. Creating 3D text, especially within Illustrator is like really, really easy and you don't have to like use Blender or something like really fancy. But also we can add these really few fun adjustments that can just make it a little bit more special. Start by writing your text with your favorite font. I probably suggest like a nice bold one. I'm gonna use Druk personally. After, make sure your text color is on gray. That way you can actually see the 3D extruding. Go to effect, 3D materials, 3D Classic, and select Extrude and Bevel Classic. I, I just don't use a new one, okay? Then of course you wanna rotate your text until you find something that you love. I usually try to like give it a little bit of a tilt on the right or left and then just like move it up or down very, very basically. However though, do not forget to add extrude depth and go from around where it says 50 on default to anywhere at least 150 plus. Once you're done, you can go to effect, warp and arc. This is where you can play with almost like every single one of these settings to get a different look for your 3D text before you would call it done. Whether if it's arc, bulge, whatever it is, move your settings left and right and you just 
texts, you get something pretty cool. Afterwards, when you're done having fun manipulating your text, you want to, of course, select the entire text itself, then go to Object Expand Appearance. And then just like that, I'd probably start off with selecting the actual front facing text and I'm going to make it whatever color I want. Then I'm going to go ahead and select the actual back extrude 3D portion of this text and I'm going to go to Select Same and then Fill Color. That way it selects all the same colors and it'll just make this black. But just like that, I'm, we're done. That's literally it. If you ask yourself, could you do this in Photoshop? Yes, but not literally. And it's also not going to be editable as much. So yeah, Illustrator. And it's a vector, just saying. Now, the last one is absolutely a classic, but it's very much so worth like noting just because I've used it a few times in a pair of concepts already. And that, of course, is known as the stress text. Start off with some text on your canvas. And if you guys have a single layer, make it a smart object. And if you have multiple lines of text, select both by pressing on one, holding control, pressing on the other one, and then make it into a smart object. That way, of course, it gets all grouped up and you can still edit the actual text after you're done. Then select on your text layer and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Choose about 10 pixels and then press OK. Then go into filter, blur again and choose radial blur this time. And I would go with the settings of around seven amount, spin method, and the best quality. And now after pressing OK, the only thing left to do is go to your adjustments options and choose threshold. And of course, if you are wondering the threshold itself and how the settings work, if you go towards the left, it'll give you less, how do you say, space or less boldness, which makes the letters look a little bit more uh, legible. If you go towards the right, it'll really squeeze and muddy up this and kind of give you a really less legible thing. So I wouldn't really go half more than halfway past the halfway mark, more than more. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go past the halfway mark period and then just go more towards the left to kind of work with it, right? Now, if you need to though, you can also go into your gradient, uh, your Gaussian blur and lower it from like 10 to maybe about six and you might get less distortion with the text. That way you can go back into your threshold and then go higher if you need that kind of higher effect and that higher meshingness with your type, okay? When you export it, it's a hard thing to do if you don't know, right? We can't really move this out because if you move this to a different thing or even try to combine them together, sure, you can move this whole thing, but then how do you like get it and move the text around on an actual graphic? One sec. So what you're gonna wanna do is select on your text itself, then go to where it says select, color range and make sure you change your drop down menu from wherever it is you might be on highlights or shadows if you didn't of course change it from the previous effect that we just did before but make sure it's on sampled colors and select the black and what this will do is it'll select only the black within the entire canvas which should be your text so what that gives you the option to do now is on your adjustments table right i'm going to choose where it says solid color and then you can make this color black if you guys want to keep it black but you can also make it like red if you wanted to make it red you can do that now too and then this layer alone is the only layer you'll need you don't you don't have to have these other layers showing anymore it's just this layer and you can kind of just do whatever you want with it now so you can change the color rotate it add some layer styles to it if you guys want to and all that good stuff and of course it makes it also transparent which is really good because you can go back over here right and just kind of add these two things together if you guys wanted to right so that's it so with that that is the basic little fun things you can do with like apparel apparel-esque effects and such there's plenty more and you can you can you can you can let me know if you want to see some more but it's entirely up to you so you can just leave a like and all that good stuff however i hope you guys learned something you guys had some fun you guys can also go make your own t-shirts and if you guys do let me know show me on instagram twitter whatever at switch if you guys want to and uh is that it i think that's it yeah i'm, I'm gone it says so hq out you're having to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later much love peace and wildly enough i got this entire video while having an acl uh uh what is it called reconstruction surgery i'm crazy i'm cracked i'm in pain but I'm good. I'll see you guys later.